good morning everybody uh, it's a great honor today to be amongst all of you uh, and to share a few thoughts uh, that i have uh, uh, my talk is on a few learnings in my life as i have gone through my while i have gone through my life journey uh, name rajiv gandhi 1962 11 july date of birth 1984 completed my bachelor's in commerce and got into the family business the family business that i got into was a very small meager small uh, business supply of pharmaceutical raw materials that was in mumbai uh, uh, principally my father was a trader the business was going down but i was reasonably determined to get into business and try to do something and take the business to higher level somehow or the other tried my stint on supply of pharmaceutical raw materials failed could not really take the business further next being in the pharmaceutical line connected with pharmaceutical people thought let me take up distribution of medicines human medicines uh, the finished products of all these pharmaceutical companies tried hard could not get that distribution incidentally around that time that's again 1984 companies were starting their animal health divisions uh, not really having any other choice but still determined to get into some business took up the distribution of uh, animal health products of a few companies and therefore i started a proprietary company by the name of rajiv and associates and started doing the business push the business to a reasonable high level because it was an emerging business there weren't many distribution uh, centers or dist uh, companies distributing these products so it gave me of course a little lead as being one of the first in it and my determination to make sure that i take it further i came through many hurdles uh, supply of uh, medicines to uh, poultry farms cattle farms they were all on the outskirts of uh, cities uh, definitely far away from mumbai city where i actually resided and had the business place but pushed it took the business forward there have been times when there have been deliveries to be done and i have not been able to organize a tempo i have driven a tempo and uh, given delivery farm to farm and taken the business further 1987 by that time i had already become a number of uh, a number one distributor for many companies uh, because as i said i changed the model of distribution started giving deliveries and as the whole uh, business was coming up new uh, in 1987 i formed a company by the name of hester pharmaceuticals private limited hoping and thinking that some day i will do something big in the corporate world and would emulate the big companies for which i was a distributor at that time like smith klein french glaxo sinomed some of these companies don't exist today by the virtue of them having got merged or uh, changed the names etc <coughs> 1989 i got uh, in touch with a japanese company who were willing to offer me distribution for their animal health products without really knowing anything what that company was doing in japan just the thirst and the hunger to do business and make it grow i took up the distribution of that japanese company the name was gen corporation and uh, started importing their feed additives to be added in the poultry feed incidentally that same year the japanese company took over an animal a uh, poultry vaccine manufacturing company based out of the united states so by default we became distributors in india for uh, poultry vaccines in my distribution in rajiv and associates a proprietary company i had already reached a very high level in supplying distributing poultry vaccines so this was anyway nothing different and new to me in fact i was very happy and it added on to my range upon importing poultry vaccines i realized that the prices at which the other companies were selling poultry vaccines in india versus what was offered to me by the uh, company were very different interestingly the imported prices were nearly one third to the prices at what i used to buy the poultry vaccines uh, from the local companies that prompted me why not get into manufacture of poultry vaccines 
all these thoughts while I am still running the proprietary company and just started the distribution in distribution in Estee Pharmaceuticals. Uh, pushed the idea with the poultry vaccine manufacturing company that why don't we start uh, manufacturing poultry vaccines in India as even now and even at that time selling anything uh, for India from a marketing India is always very easy. You talk about the population and the opportunities. People do get excited about it and I use the same means. I got them interested in setting up a poultry vaccines manufacturing unit in India. Now the next, how do I raise the money? Uh, requested them take on equity in lieu of technology transfer so there is no money outflow to them and I can still have the technology. They agreed to that. In 1984, to take the project further, I had an IPO. At that time, things were very different from what it is now in raising finances, etc. Uh, I had an IPO without land, without any uh, track record, without any history except for the history of the proprietary company but determined to raise money. I went through the whole process in the name Hester Pharmaceuticals, private limited, converted it into limited, had an IPO, raised the money, acquired the land somewhere near Ahmedabad. That is why I moved to Ahmedabad from Mumbai and established the manufacturing company and then took the business further. So my friends, my first uh, uh, thought that I would want to share is be determined. Be determined in what you want to do and you will be able to take things forward. Where there is a will, there is a way. From a proprietary company, here I am not trying to talk on what I have achieved. What I am trying to uh, stress is if your determination is strong, you will be able to find the way and take things further through all the hardships, through all the hurdles. Second thought I would want to share. Be strong on your principles. Just stick on to your principles, your ethos uh, and don't shift, don't budge on that. By doing so, you will definitely be able to grow mentally yourself because you will always feel happy that I am doing what I want to do. I will and I will just expand my thoughts, my ethos, my principles and take things further. Uh, and these principles could be philosophical principles, it could be ideological principles, it could be administrative principles while you are in business. To give you an example of an administrative principle, earlier there was no thought, there was no uh, frame of mind on how I would do the business. We would give unlimited credit to our uh, uh, clients and then we would run around for money. And though we would have a good business, but we would never have cash in the company. Always, even with a good business, not having money in the bank account, wanting to borrow money from the bank, trying to uh, take credit from the suppliers. We hired a manager at that time and one thing that he taught me in is that learn to say no to business. The moment you learn to say no to business, automatically business will come to you. I like that idea very much, formed a rule in the company which I take it as a principle now, not to extend credit to anybody. I mean of course there are some sort sometimes circumstances which we uh, bend uh, uh, the rules sometimes but that principle that I followed it has helped us so much that today we are reasonably rich in cash besides having the good profitability on principles there are many shortcuts one would get lured to while on their uh, way of uh, life maybe in business maybe uh, personally or whatever it is these shortcuts, if taken, sometimes they get you around and get you back to the same place where you are and then it will be difficult because you have wasted so much time in life. Stand, do not, do not ever compromise on your principles. In business, sometimes we really find, let's take this shortcut, there is a um, uh, inspection coming from the drug authorities or some, you know, let's all prepare and plan. Why should one plan for an inspection. For that matter, why should one prepare so much for an exam? If you are in it, you the exam is just something which you are writing of what you already know. So, be uh, do not uh, ever take 
take these shortcuts in business, in personal life, trust me, it will take you such great heights that you will, uh, you would have not imagined and every night you will be able to see, sleep peacefully and with lot of pride. So that's the second. The third and the last, be open about your aspirations in life. Never ever feel uh, uh, shy to share your aspirations in life. If at all you feel shy about telling what you really want to do, then there is definitely something wrong within our own selves. Are we trying to do something wrong, something which is not allowed? What is it? So don't ever feel uh, shy. You will be mocked in that process. People will mock. Are ye to bol raha tha, ye to ye karne wala tha. Kider hua, kuch hua nahi. Don't worry about it. Take that mockery. But it will increase your determination. In days to come and every day when you get up, see yourself in the mirror, it will remind you that I have told so and so people that I want to do this and that will even make you stronger in your determination to take these things further. To give you two examples of my uh, uh, inspiration and what I had thought in life. In school days, in college days, I had always told my friends that I would want to visit 50 countries on this earth. And they would always laugh at me, you know, 50 countries, I mean, we are talking, uh, I mean, what, what the hell are we talking? 50 countries, it's a very big number. In school days, you know, we are traveling by bus, the bus uh, in Bombay, uh, the BST bus, uh, the fare would be 5 paisa. And uh, we would even save that 5 paisa so that we can buy something with that 5 paisa in those days to make such big claims. Another claim I made and it is in writing that I have made it to my college friends. It, they still remind me they have made a big mock out of me. I told them that one day I will own a small aircraft. So these were the two, these were the two aspirations uh, that I had in life. By the time I was uh, 48 uh, uh, years old, I had visited, I had touched the 50th country and that made me really fr proud and I told everybody that I had mentioned this to you in school days, college days and here I have done it. Um, just uh, tr uh, last year, I achieved my other objective in acquiring a, a very small aircraft, a four-seater. It's the cheapest aircraft that one could ever think of buying. But yes, I saved money all my life. I have not bought a single property. I have not bought a single asset. I don't have any other assets. It's just the shares of my company and this one aircraft that I have. People would always uh, mock about this aircraft thing was a bigger mockery than the 50 countries but then I heard them and I proved it to them that uh, I have done what I have wanted to do. In Whenever you make your aspirations, don't connect them to monetary things. Have aspirations and then let it incidentally those aspirations may involve money, it may involve other things. Aspirations need not be linked. I think if one aspires that I want to become a billionaire, that aspiration really, of course it will take you, but if you aspire these, let these things be secondary on the money aspect. Uh, your aspiration should not link with money and automatically all these things will come. Yes, to buy an aircraft you need money, but the aspiration to have an aircraft that I have to earn money. So how I have to earn money? I have to be in business. Let me be determined. Let me do big business. So these are the ways you take things forward. So thank you friends for hearing me out. Uh, thank you.